So in today's video, I'll be talking about the core rule books and why you should read them, not just make reference to them. So as many of you know, I've been playing Dungeons and Dragons for a long time. I've been playing since the late 70s, and I have many rule books. And I've used these rule books as reference over the years. If you look at something like the Fiend Folio, back in first edition, you flip through it, find creatures that you wanted to use in your campaign, and use them in your campaign. What's interesting about the newer rule books and what Wizards of the Coast is doing with these books is they're adding lore to the front of the book. Now, the book we'll be talking about today, in particular, is Morden Kanan's Tome of Foes. This book was released in May of 2018. I bought it shortly thereafter. I used it in my campaigns. I used it as reference material. I referred to it pretty regularly because it's got a nice selection of creatures in it, particularly fiends. What's interesting is I hadn't actually sat down and read the book until February of 21. That's when I opened up the book and I realized that there are 30 pages in Morden Kanan's Tome of Foes on the Blood Wars. What is the Blood War, you may ask? Let's get into it. So what is the Blood War? Well, the Blood War is an ancient conflict in Dungeons and Dragons between the fiends of the Lower Plains. Now, fiends represents demons and devils. The two main sides of this war are the demons that inhabit the plane of chaos known as the Abyss, and the devils that are inhabitants of the Nine Hells. They are equally evil, but more lawful. And that's the key when thinking about the Blood War. To think of these two sides as the demons being very chaotic and the devils being very lawful, both of them very, very evil, and the other planes caught up uh, by the damage and chaos that this uh, conflict represents when it spills over into those planes. So the Blood War is something that is a construct from previous editions of Dungeons & Dragons that is maintained in 5th edition. But as I said, when I bought Morden Kanan's Tome of Foes, when it came out, I was most interested in the Creature Codex. I was most interested in the stat blocks of the various creatures. And one of my favorites is Zugtmoy. I have other videos that talk about the Demon Queen of Fungi. Uh, and how much I really enjoy Zugtmoy and her conflict with Jewablex. And I've been personally familiar with that conflict for a long time. What I hadn't really done was open up the book, open up Morden Canons, and really understand what other lore is included in the front of the book. There are 30 pages in the front of the book in Chapter 1 just dedicated to the Blood War. Now, there are other chapters as well. So I'm encouraging you to read the books. Don't just use them as reference for your creature statistics, but read the books. And there are a number of chapters in Morden Canaan's before you get to the bestiary, which is chapter six, which is just an appendix full of monsters. And there are monster lists uh, in the back as well, where it's nicely organized by challenge rating and then also by creature type. So if you're looking for a particular challenge rating, you can find those creatures. If you're looking for a particular creature type, fiends or humanoids or undead, you can search in the back in the appendix by creature type as well. So there are 30 pages in this book that refer to the Blood War. 30 pages. It's worth reading. So as I said, I owned this book since it was released in 2018, but didn't read it for almost three years. I used it. I referred to the bestiary but I never actually read the contents in the front of the book. I never actually poured through those chapters that added lore and description to the game that I love. And so I encourage you to read these. Don't just pick them up and use them as reference. There are frequently sections in the front where Wizards of the Coast adds additional lore to build out the rules of the game, the rules as written. And they'll synthesize and aggregate content that may be historic, like in this case, the Blood War has been a concept that's been around Dungeons and Dragons for a long time. And it's canonized in fifth edition in Morden Canons in a nice way. It talks about the Lords of the Nine Hells. It talks about the different fiends and demons and their interactions. There are sub races added, specifically Tiefling. Tiefling is a sub race that has a fiendish background. And so there are details on developing your Tiefling character. It talks about the princes of the abyss, lords 
of the hells and demonic boons. It talks about demon customization tables and fiendish cults. Again, there are 30 pages of details about the blood war in this book. So I encourage you to read the section on the blood war and the other sections that are in Morden Canaan's. The other sections are chapter two, elves. So an entire section about the elven race. It talks about drow. So it sets the rules as written for fifth edition for drow. There are six, seven, eight pages just on the drow. There are elf sub races and tables for elf features. The chapter on elves is fantastic. It's a classic D&D race. So I encourage you to read it. There's a third chapter on dwarves and duragar. Again, a classic D&D race, the dwarves. The Duragar are a variation of the, of the dwarven race and a very worthwhile section to read to understand that lore. Chapter four is on the Gith. So the Gith Yankee and the Gith Zerai and their endless war. Chapter five is on halflings and gnomes. And then in chapter six at page 115, we get into the bestiary. So there's so much to read in Morden Canaan's that I encourage you to read the book don't just refer to it for the bestiary. Coming back to fiends and coming back to the blood war. I was a big fan of using fiends in my campaign. I used a lot of demons and devils in my campaign and I had purchased the icons of the realm, Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus pre-painted mini set. I had purchased actually a case of those minis and was lucky enough to get every mini in the set. So I had actually purchased these. This is a Baylor. This is Zariel. And I have many, many more um, Legion Horned Devil. A lot of these minis that I used regularly in my previous campaign. And I really, really enjoyed this set. I used the set before I had ever read the Blood War chapter in Morden Canaan's. And so I was using reference um, and looking at the stat blocks in Morden Canaan's, but I hadn't read the chapter on Blood Wars. And I, I knew about the Blood War, but it's very, very nicely summarized in Morden Canaan's. It gives you a really good uh, balanced perspective of the conflict between demons and devils and why each side sees the other as their sworn enemy. And, and the, the devils actually feel as though they're protecting the material plane from the demons. It's quite interesting to understand the perspective of these two sides. The devilish point of view is such that, and I'm reading, this is a quote from the book attributed to Zariel, the Arch uh, Duchess of Avernus. Um, My legions are the only thing standing between your precious seven heavens and the bottomless hunger of the abyss. I did not fall into the clutches of evil. I rose to shoulder a cosmic burden. So Zariel is basically saying uh, she's the only one that, that uh, resists the demonic uprising. The devils really see it lawfully as their, as their purpose to prevent the uprising of the demons. And so as much as we talk about good and evil is very arbitrary, it was very interesting for me to read through this section uh, these 30 pages in Morden Canaan's Tome of Foes to understand how the blood war is characterized as a conflict between two sides uh, which cannot be resolved um, and will not be resolved but serves to balance the, the multiverse such that uh, neither side um, can kind of win and take possession of certain resources in the material plane. So the demonic point of view is that they just fight to fight, that they have these sworn enemies, the devils, and that the demon's intent is to sow chaos uh, and bring horror to uh, everyone, in particular the devils, but anyone else that gets in their way. So it's quite a lot of balance if you follow Taoist philosophy uh, or understand um, balance philosophies. It's a very interesting chapter to read where Dungeons and Dragons can characterize this blood war as a balance necessary, uh, a balance within the war that provides a balance for the multiverse. Um, and they're just really interesting creatures to incorporate into your campaign. So I hope that helps. Again, Morden Canaan's Tome of Foes, a necessary book 
for your bookshelf. And I highly encourage that you read the freaking book. Don't just use it as a bestiary reference. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this was useful. Send me any comments or questions. And as always, please like and subscribe.